Tonight in our ongoing series on Maine's changing climate, we're taking a close look at something hidden among Maine's vast wilderness. For half a decade, you Maine researchers have been following a small member of the weasel family. And as New Center Maine's David Guildford shows us, those researchers believe that by protecting the habitat of this predator from things like excessive logging and climate change, we can protect our state's most recognizable species as well. It's a very sort of relatively small sized, but very sort of ferocious animal. Meet the Martin. This adorable mammal and member of the weasel family is also a vicious hunter. For Maine wildlife habitat professor Alessio Mortoliti, seeing a Martin in Maine's woods means you have some healthy woods. It's always a good sign in terms of when you have those predators, it means you have a whole sort of, the whole food chain below that. Over a five-year study, Mortaliti and his class set up game cameras around the state and found not just a food chain, but a crossroads of Maine's iconic species running right through Martin habitat at every turn. They published their findings, calling the Martin an umbrella monitoring species. Those efforts you're putting in will automatically allow you to monitor many other species, and we found up to 11 other species. Studying the Martin habitat means studying other vital Maine species with less time and money. So then, protecting the Martin habitat could be crucial to those species as well. Martin thrive in old growth forests. The state plans for Maine's forestry industry to be worth $12 billion by 2025. I think what we're seeing now is much more holistic foresters that come prepared to, to handle the demands that society has placed on our forest. Across campus from Mortaliti, Aaron Weiskittle runs UMaine's Center for Research on Sustainable Forests. As the title suggests, Weiskittle said his job is to teach the next generation of Maine foresters to think about animal populations as much as profit. As we train the foresters today, they're thinking about much broader things than just the typical tree diameter, tree height. It's, it's about wildlife habitat. It's about conservation value. We pressed Mortaliti on the topic, and he said the logging industry has been a good partner in his efforts to keep the Martin thriving. I think there's, there's definitely throughout Maine uh, an understanding of the importance of these, of these animals, and it's just a matter of compromising on any side. Bethany Brown runs the Saco River Wildlife Center in Limington. She brought in 846 animals last year, her busiest ever. Whether through logging, climate change, or human encroachment, Brown has noticed this increase in animals that could otherwise be happy in the woods. Since I started this, I've seen a huge increase in the sightings of unusual um, wildlife such as the fisher um, and the weasels, to me that means that there is a huge decline in their territory. While Brown remains busy, Mortaliti just got another grant to continue his Martin monitoring program long term, including how Maine's changing climate impacts where they live, how they live, and who else lives under their umbrella. Starting to think about these, how these species will shift their range in response to climate change. What will the mighty Martin tell us next? David Guilford, News Center, Maine. The U.S. Department of the Interior says it's hard to determine exactly how many Martin live throughout the country's northern states. Maine has hunting limits on a few fur-bearing animals, and the Martin is one of them. Keith has